Yeah, good morning. I am Dr. Raju Devde, Professor and Head of the Department Pharmacology and Coordinator of the Adverse Drug Reaction Monitoring Center, Kaktia Medical College, MGM Hospital, Varangal. At the outset, I invite uh, the new incoming phase two MBBS batch of CBME curriculum to this online sessions. Welcome you all. And uh, today I will be uh, talking uh, on the principles of pharmacovigilance and adverse drug reaction reporting system with the objectives and the competencies that at the end of this session, the phase two MBBS student should be able to know the principles of pharmacovigilance and also the adverse drug reaction reporting system and its importance. With this competencies and objectives, I would like to deal my talk in the following contents. The history of pharmacovigilance, the ba basic terminologies, need and principles of pharmacovigilance, the pharmacovigilance program of India, and the prescriber's responsibilities in the pharmacovigilance. Now, why is this pharmacovigilance required? So if you look at a report in 1998, which estimated that 1.1 1. Uh, 1 lakh uh, Americans die each year as a result of adverse reactions to prescription medications. And to this, if medication errors were included in the statistics, the death toll would be as I has 1.4 lakh deaths per year. And as a result of 39 separate studies in USA, it was found that 3.2 out of every thousand hospitalized patients die each year as a result of adverse drug reactions to prescription drugs. That comes to around 0.32% of hospitalized patients will die each year due to prescription drugs. Hence, the pharmacovigilance definitely has human humanitarian concerns. And the Hippocrates in 1470, uh, 470 to 380 BC has quoted that if one can not do any help to the individual, at least do not harm the individual. That is according to the Hippocrates quote. Now, if you go back to the history of pharmacovigilance, you can see the slides, uh, which is called as a phocomelia or seal limbs. And this ADR was reported way back in 1960s due to a drug which is called as thalidomide. So this thalidomide and, and also sulfonylamide elixir tragedy, which has alerted various regulatory bodies across the globe. And uh, there, hence there was a need for this pharmacovigilance program and which has come out with various regulations across the world. Now, if you look at this thalidomide tragedy, which occurred in the year 1962, where this drug was first marketed in 1957 in West Germany, and this German drug company, which developed and sold this drug primarily as a sedative hypnotic, but later on thalidomide also has claimed to cure anxiety, insomnia, gastritis, and tension. Later on, it was used for the treatment of morning sickness in pregnant women. Soon, this thalidomide has become an over-the-counter drug in Germany. But later on, after its use in pregnant women in Germany, around 5,000 to 7,000 infants were born with phocomalia, which is nothing but the malformation of the limbs. And not only that, 
only out of that only 40% of the children survived and throughout the world about 10000 cases were reported and only 50% of the 10000 uh, children were born survived the other effects of this thalidomide tragedy included deformed eyes uh, there are some congenital abnormalities in the heart the deformed git the urinary tracts blindness and deafness so this has resulted especially uh, the who to establish an international adverse drug reaction monitoring program in response to the thalidomide disaster then if you look at there was there is a a, 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 a a collaborating center that is who world health organization collaborating center in 1968 for international drug monitoring in geneva but later on in 1978 this uh, international drug monitoring center was moved to uppsala sweden after the agreement between sweden and who and of course this particular uppsala umc or uppsala monitoring center in sweden is a self financing body which takes care of the global pharmacovigilance program so this umc is a global center for pharmacovigilance so even we have to report uh, the adrs adverse drug reactions to the national coordinating center which is there in gaziabad that is ipc that is indian pharmacopeia uh, commission the pvpi which is there in gaziabad later on the reports are directed to the uppsala monitoring center which is present in sweden which is the international adr uh, monitoring center now after knowing the brief history of pharmacovigilance why it was uh, necessary to establish this pharmacovigilance activities or post marketing surveillance activities one should know the basic terminologies used in the pharmacovigilance program so what are these basic terminologies one which is called as an adverse event so what is this adverse event it is nothing but any untoward medical occurrence that is temporarily associated with the use of medicinal product but which does not sorry so there is there is a spelling mistake there but which does not necessarily have a causal relationship with the treatment it does not have any causal relationship but it is an untoward medical occurrence that is temporarily associated with the use of medicinal product or medicine but it does not have any necessary a causal relationship with the treatment so if you look at this particular slide this is an adverse event this gentleman who has taken uh, the chlorpheniramine malate tablet so this is a chlorpheniramine malate tablet okay and uh, this chlorpheniramine malate and uh, uh, the common i mean uh, <clears throat> the brand name is avil everybody might be knowing so after taking this chlorpheniramine malate the side effect is drowsiness and this drowsiness while driving may result in a fatal uh, event or an accident which is an adverse event okay but actually there is no correlation or a causal relationship between uh, consuming uh, avil or chlorpheniramine malate and making an accident or meeting with an accident it is actually that now when you look at this another terminology which is called as adverse drug reaction so this uh, it was the term coined by who in 1972 so what is this adverse drug reaction it is a response to a drug which is noxious and unintended and which occurs at doses normally used in humans for the prophylaxis diagnosis or therapy of the disease and for modifications of physiological function the examples of the drugs causing adverse drug reactions and these are the drugs which has resulted in development of adverse rea drug reactions in mgm hospital these are the documented adrs in mgm hospital for example zudovidin or azithromycin is an anti retroviral drug used in the treatment of hiv which causes anemia as the adverse drug reaction then atropine <clears throat> which is an anti muscarinic drug used in the treatment of 
organophosphorus compound poisoning resulting in development of psychosis. Then phenytoin, which is again an anticonvulsant, has induced Steven Johnson syndrome, which is the serious dermatological reaction with phenytoin sodium, which is an anticonvulsant. Again, if you look at this efavirenz, it is an antiretroviral drug used in the treatment of HIV infection and AIDS, which has induced development of gynecomastia. Of course, I have pics also to show you in my uh, 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 couple of slides uh, later. Then isoniazid, it is the primary drug, first line drug in the treatment of uh, tuberculosis inducing hepatotoxicity. All these drugs which are used in and out resulting in development of ADRs, adverse drug reactions. So this particular adverse drug reaction, which has a causal relationship with the effect or the reaction. Now, this slide, it shows that adverse drug events, there is no need to have a causal relationship. That is, a, I have given an example, chlorpheniramine causing drowsiness and resulting in development and an accident. Then adverse drug reaction, they do have a causal relationship and uh, it is suspected or an established causal relationship uh, with respect to the adverse drug reactions. Whereas adverse drug events, they don't have a causal relationship with the drug. There might be some extended effects or side effects of those drugs. It may not be an adverse drug reaction. Now, what are the data uh, that, I'm sorry. Uh, now, the determination of expectedness. So what is this determination of expectedness? It is nothing but expected adverse drug reactions or adverse events. Is it listed or is it unlisted? So if you have seen any uh, medications, you have purchased any medications from a pharmacy, uh, if you have that uh, along with the tablets or the drugs or injections, you have a, 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 a leaflet which is present inside the a, a pouch or the cover. And if you read that leaflet, it will give you what are all the indications, what are all the contraindications, what are the common side effects, what are the uh, uh, mild side effects, the rare side, very rare side effects like that. So expected ADRs is listed. That means to say, the, suppose if I'm going to give a person uh, uh, chlorpromazine or uh, carbamazepine per se, uh, which is <clears throat> uh, an, an anti-epileptic drug or it is used in the uh, uh, psychiatry, if I give that drug, the listed ADRs are there, unlisted ADRs are there. So what is listed ADR? So for example, expected ADR, which is listed, there is a consistent with the applicable product information or characteristics of the drug. And it is listed in the current package leaflet or the current package insert. That means to say, if you purchase an injection or an antibiotic injection or any medication which is there in the package, there is a leaflet inserted inside containing the listed adverse drug reactions. So that is what is called as an expected adverse drug reaction or expected adverse event. What is an ad unexpected AD or an unexpected adverse event which is not listed or unlisted? So these are the ADRs or adverse events are not previously identified during the clinical trials which become evident in the post-marketing surveillance. So that is what is called as an unexpected adverse drug reaction. Now, there is one more uh, terminology which is called a serious adverse drug event or serious adverse drug reaction, SAE or SAR. So what is, how do you define this? A serious adverse drug event or a adverse drug reaction is any untoward medical occurrence that result in fatal, life-threatening, it may result in fatality, the patient or the person may die, or it may be life-threatening, or there might be hospitalization or prolonged hype, or it prolongs hospitalization, or may lead to a disability or birth defects, or medically judged to be serious. And for the purpose of reporting to the concerned regulatory authorities, serious adverse event or serious adverse reaction is further classified into suspected unexpected serious adverse reaction that is called a SUSAR. 
suspected unexpected serious adverse reaction susar and ssar or suspected serious adverse reaction okay now when you look into the monitoring of this particular adverse drug event or it is a serious adverse reaction or serious adverse events or serious un, uh, suspected unexpected serious adverse reaction and adverse reaction so adverse events they do not have any causal relationship adverse drug reactions and adverse drug events they do have sometimes causal relationship serious adverse reactions and suspected unexpected serious adverse drug reactions they may result in fatality or prolonged hospitalization and so on and so forth so we have to uh, uh, persistently monitor the drugs which have come into the market after the third phase of clinical trial after approval of the us fda and the drugs are coming into the market this pharmacovigilance program or post marketing surveillance is an ongoing process till the drug is existing in the uh, 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 in the uh, 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 existing for use to the population at large okay now <clears throat> there is one term which is called as toxicity so this toxicity may be a result of excessive pharmacological action of the drug due to overdosage or prolonged use and this overdosage may be either an absolute overdosage may be due to an accidental intake or it could be homicidal or suicidal okay the drug can be taken to commit a suicide or the drug can be given to kill a person or it might be an accidental intake intake of the drug with respect to children and there is a relative toxicity this is especially when you talk about gentamicin gentamicin uh, it is a drug an amino glycoside it is used uh, commonly in the treatment of urinary tract infections but excess drug may result in development of renal failure and uh, a result from the toxicity may also result from extension of the therapeutic effects for example barbiturates may result in development of coma because they have very narrow therapeutic margin okay barbiturates like thiopentan sodium hem, uh, 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 hexa i mean what is pentabarbital thiopentan sodium they may result in coma and death and digoxin it is a uh, cardiac glycoside uh, which is used in the cardiac conditions like congestive heart failure may result in a complete av block that is atrial ventricular block and heparin its extension or extended treatment with heparin or overdose of heparin may result in bleeding and there is some functional alteration uh, the toxicity may be also due to functional alteration due to atropine again it is an anti muscarinic drug may result in development of delirium tremens or delirium especially then drug induced tissue damage especially paracetamol result resulting in hepatic necrosis then there is one term uh, 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 very often uh, <clears throat> talked about which is called as causality assessment so at this particular juncture for a ug or a mbbs student this particular causality assessment may not be of that much helpful but what is this causality assessment it is nothing but uh, defined as the evaluation of the likelihood that a medicine was the causative agent of an observed adverse event so it is linking the relationship between or the causal relationship could be a temporal causal relationship between the drug which is taken for the treatment of some disorder and a, a resultant adverse drug reaction whether it is having some temporal relationship or relation the time relationship between the intake and development of an adverse drug reaction okay so i will not uh, discuss all this thing but anyway so these uh, these ensure that the drug has caused the suspected reaction and there should be a, a temporal association between the drug use and the appearance of the adverse drug reaction and this drug reaction uh, should disappear or may partially disappear once the drug is stopped so stopping see somebody takes a drug and then he develops some adverse drug reaction and it think that it has some causal relationship 
So the first thing what we have to do is to stop the drug. So the, the, the process of stopping the drug is called as de-challenge. So this de-challenge. So after de-challenging the patient with the drug, there should be a disappearance of the ADRs or the, if it is a cutaneous ADR, like a, some rash drug, rash it will disappear or may partially disappear. And uh, it should reappear again when the drug is reintroduced. That is called as a re-challenge. Re-challenge is, de-challenge is stopping the drug after an ADR, say for example, a cutaneous ADR or drug rash, stop the drug, the reaction should subside or it should subside by giving some medication. Then after a few days, again, when you reintroduce the drug, the same reaction should occur, which is called as a re-challenge. But this re-challenge strategy is not followed because if you do a re-challenge and then suddenly the patient develops a serious or a fatal Steven Johnson syndrome or a toxic epidermal necrolysis or renal failure or a cardiac arrhythmia and the patient dies, then it is a big problem. So de-challenge we can do, but the re-challenge is again very much questionable. Even if we want to do a re-challenge, we have to give some one by hundred dose or something like that. And the patient has to be, I mean, the, in the ICU uh, to tackle with any serious eventuality. But re-challenge, it is a term is there where we reintroduce and then uh, look for the reappearance of an ADR, so which is not practiced in the pharmacovigilance program of India. However, performing this de-challenge and re-challenge is not always possible in the real clinical situations. In these cases, one should use the best judgment about the adverse effect, underlying disease conditions, the profiles of the drug, the concomitant medications, and pattern after removing the most likely offender. So this is very important. So causality, causality assessment is a broad uh, topic to be discussed, but not at this particular juncture. Anyway, uh, for causality assessment, we do have various scales designed by various uh, uh, modalities. For example, different scales used for causality assessment that is a commonly one uh, used is a WHO Uppsala Monitoring Center causality assessment scale. Then another common one is the Naranjo scale. So these two scales are very commonly used for assessing the causality or assessment. Then we have Karch and Lasenga scale. We have drug interaction probability scale. That's what DIPS. We have Begod algorithm, Siom scale, and Liverpool ADR scale. But the commonly used ones are the Naranjo scale and WHO UMC causality assessment scale. This is only for your dimension at this particular juncture. Then. Uh, this causality uh, assessment scale, uh, commonly used one is WHO UMC. And this causality terms, we are having certain terms. They are called as certain, probable or likely, possible, unlikely, unconditional, or unclassified, and unaccessible, unclassified. So there are six terms over here. So what do you mean by assessment criteria with a certain, certain? So in causality assessment term, that is certain. If you say that the ADR is a certain ADR, what it should have. So the certain term cannot be explained by disease or other drugs. Response to withdrawal or plausible, that the pharmacologically or pathologically plausible, and event is definitive pharmacologically or phenomen phenomenologically that is an objective and specific, specific medical disorder or recognized pharmacological phenomenon. So here, re-challenge is satisfactory if necess necessary. So this is what is called as certain ADR. That means to say an event or laboratory test abnormality uh, with plausible time relationship to the drug intake, which is called as a certain. So we say that term of ADR, which is certain. There's the ADR, we label it as certain. So what is probable or likely ADR? So it is an event or laboratory test abnormality with reasonable time relationship to the drug and unlikely to be attributed to the disease or other drugs. So here it is a response or uh, to withdrawal possible or plausible, cannot be explained by disease or other. 
and it is unlikely to be attributed to disease or other drugs and the response to withdrawal clinically is reasonable and rechallenge not required here so rechallenge might be satisfactory in certain if it is certain the drug has caused this adr if it is certain if a rechallenge will be satisfactory that means to say you stop it give a drug again the drug may reproduce the same adr but whereas here a rechallenge is not required in this particular probable uh, type of adr or likely type of adr then we have another uh, the term which is called as possible it is an event or laboratory test abnormality with reasonable time relationship to drug intake and it could also be explained by disease or other drugs so here it is ambiguity so this particular drug may also result in development of an adr and some other concomitant drugs may also cause this particular reaction which is called as possible i will like to give one best example here for example isoniazid rifampicin and pyrazinamide isoniazid rifampicin and pyrazinamide these three drugs are the primary drugs which are used in the treatment of tuberculosis all these th three drugs may result in development of the liver uh, 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 liver adr or it may cause hepatotoxicity okay so rifampicin may cause hepatotoxicity isoniazid may cause hepatotoxicity so we have to stop all the three drugs so in this particular category we mention all the three drugs which are possibly causing hepatotoxicity then we have another drug, uh, term which is called as unlikely so event or laboratory test abnormality with a time to drug intake that makes the relationship improbable improbable but not impossible so this is and other drugs provide plausible explanation so then we say that this drug may not be likely to have caused this particular reaction then conditional unclassified is there where more data for proper assessment is needed or additional data under examination is needed then unassessable and unclassified where the report suggesting any adverse drug reaction cannot be judged because the information is insufficient or contradictory and the data cannot uh, be supplemented or verified so please remember these six terminologies with respect to causality assessment scale certain probable possible unlikely conditional unclassified unassessable and unclassified out of which mostly when we are uh, reporting it could be either probable or if it is really uh, having a time relationship and uh, when you de challenge and you go for re challenge the reaction is occurring we say certain but probable and possible are mostly we are uh, 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 reporting so what is the need and principles of pharmacovigilance when you talk about the needs of pharmacovigilance there is a definitely a need because uh, number 1 there is unreliability of preclinical safety data so this preclinical safety data the entire safety data cannot be extrapolated in the human clinical trials and uh, because these uh, unreliability of preclinical safety data is mainly due to well controlled conditions small and specific sample size the pressure from various groups to reduce the time for approval and then changing pharmaceutical marketing strategies and uh, aggressive marketing uh, in this we have aggressive marketing direct to consumer advertising and launch uh, uh, in many countries at a time so this is changing pharma pharmaceutical marketing strategies then when you look into another uh, need for pharmacovigilance where the changing physician and patient preferences in changing patient and uh, physician and patient preferences there is increasing use of newer drugs there is increasing use of drugs to improve the quality of life and the shift of supervised to self administered therapy this is due to changing physician and patient preferences when you look into another need for pharmacovigilance most of the drugs in our days they are easily accessible that means to say increasing conversion of prescription drugs to over the counter drugs easy access to by internet easy availability of complementary medic medications and easy availability of 
substandard drugs. So all these things are possible in today's scenario. One is unreliability of the preclinical safety data, then changing pharmaceutical manufacturing strategies, changing physician and patient preferences, and easy accessibility of various drugs may result in excessive need of pharmacovigilance. So now, pharmacovigilance, if you look at pharmacovigilance, it is a system to monitor the safety and effectiveness of medicines and other pharmaceutical products, right? It is the system to monitor the safety and effectiveness of medicines and other pharmaceutical products. And WHO, it defines pharmacovigilance as a science and activities relating to the detection, assessment, understanding, and prevention of adverse effects or any other possible drug-related problems. So you please remember the definition. It is a uh, branch of medicine which, uh, which deals with science and activities related to DAUP, that is detection, assessment, understanding, and prevention of adverse effects or any other possible drug-related problem. So when you talk about this pharmacovigilance, it is actually pharmacon, which means a drug, and vigilare is to keep a watch. So we need, to we need to keep a watch on the drug which has come into the market for, uh, uh, there is no time limit for that. A, so we don't have any time frame for watching. So as long as the drug is there in the market, we have to be vigilant with respect to the development of ADRs, uh, which may not be, seen during the preclinical testing or the uh, clinical trials. <clears throat> so if you look at this clinical development of medicines, so here actually there's another uh, topic here that is uh, development of uh, a new drug entity and uh, the clinical trials and good clinical practice. There I would like to discuss in detail regarding this various phases. But if you look at this particular phase, that is, Phase four, which is nothing but post-approval studies to be uh, to determine the specific safety issues. So once the drug it comes into the market after the phase three clinical trial, which is called as post-marketing surveillance or pharmacovigilance program. Okay, so we need to be vigilant. So this phase four is called as post-approval phase, where we are going to report spontaneous reporting or spontaneous reporting, or it is also called as up to here, the preclinical animal experimentation, the clinical trials up to phase three, it is called as the drug development stage. And uh, after the drug comes into the market, that is phase four, which is called as post-registration phase. And this is the phase we have to be very much careful in monitoring the ADRs because as you know that there are newer and newer molecules which are coming into the market every day. So we need to monitor this. Then pharmacovigilance life cycle, it, whether it is a pre or post marketing. So when you look into the pre-market research and development, the preclinical animal toxicity testing is done. Then phase one, phase two, phase three clinical trials. And after the phase three clinical trial is over, there's a regulatory body, which is called as USFDA, which will uh, review the entire uh, 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 data, the research data. R&D data and it will give approval. And then the post-marketing real world use, the drug comes into the post-market or it is there open into the market for its use where the pricing and assessment of the benefit risk and the risk management activities which are undertaken in a program which is called as pharmacovigilance. So whether the drug which has come into the market really it is giving benefit to the patient or there is any risk related to the drug and if there is any risk related to drug, whether the drug has to be abstained from the market, banned from the market, or given an additional label which was not there earlier in the clinical trials or preclinical testing, or it has to be banned, and the management activities of the ADRs has been dealt with the post-marketing surveillance and pharmacovigilance program. Now, uh, see, if you look at this particular uh, ADR reporting, any person can report any drug-related ADR 
at any time. So this is the thing. So any person can report any drug related uh, ADR. He can report any time. So that is the uh, report a drug associated with adverse drug reactions. Any person can do it, a layman can do it, uh, a, a healthcare professional can do it, a pharmacist, a nurse, a lab technician, he can report anytime we have, because this pharmacovigilance program of India has evolved with various modalities in reporting and it has simplified the reporting methods with respect to various apps and then uh, various forms I will discuss in the later part of my class. Now, these are certain ADRs which are uh, 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 seen in uh, especially the MGM hospital. So this is an adverse drug reaction into cefixim. Cefixim is a cephalosporin. It is an antibiotic resulting in development of a Steven Johnson syndrome in this lady. So after this cefixim induced reaction, uh, the drug was uh, de-challenged. That means the drug was stopped and supportive management was given like antihistamines and then corticosteroids and then other supportive management in Steven Johnson, there might be some fluid electrolyte imbalance, then there might be some renal abnormality, some renal failure due to fluid losses through the skin and all those things. Supportive management was given and the patient was recovered. Then we have an ADR, which is due to cotrimoxazole. It is a sulfonamide. Cotrimoxazole is a sulfonamide resulting in a cutaneous ADR. You can see this cutaneous ADR with cotrimoxazole, that is the tablet septran which is commonly uh, used in uh, 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 sulfonamide, especially in patients with uh, uh, pneumocystis carinae or pneumocystis zerovacaine pneumonia. It's an opportunistic infection in the patients with HIV and AIDS. Then this is an ADR, which is due to a resultant due to a paracetamol. This ADR also was uh, detected in the MGM hospital Warangal. Then apart from that, if you look at this particular individual, this is gynecomastia due to efavirenz. So efavirenz is an antiretroviral drug used uh, um, in the regimen that is TLE, that is tenofovir, lamivudine, and efavirenz in HIV and AIDS patients. So resulting in development of gynecomastia. Then apart from that, you can see there's an articular rash with pap maculopapular rash with Cefixim induced, then ciprofloxacin induced rash in this particular patient. So there are so many slides. And this is actually a healing reaction, uh, which is called as a Steven Johnson syndrome induced by phenytoin sodium. So this phenytoin sodium uh, commonly we see uh, in and out, especially not in and out, but uh, commonly we see uh, phenytoin induced Steven Johnson syndrome. Actually, these are the healing lesions. These, these are not active lesions. These are the healing lesions that is of Steven Johnson syndrome, it's the cutaneous ADS. If you look at this cutaneous ADS, there are three cutaneous ADS, which are serious uh, uh, cutaneous ADS. One is Steven Johnson syndrome. Next one is toxic epidermal necrolysis and uh, TEN, SJS, TEN, and uh, uh, yeah, that is Steven Johnson syndrome, toxic epidermal necrolysis, and erythema multiforme. These three reactions are very ser serious cutaneous drug reactions, which are commonly seen in the dermatological practice. Steven Johnson syndrome, toxic epidermal necrolysis, and uh, erythema multiforme. Now, now we will discuss about the entity which is called as pharmacovigilance program of India. What is India doing in this post-marketing surveillance and pharmacovigilance program of India? Now, pharmacovigilance in India was started way back in 1982. And even before that also in 1970s, it was started, but there were a lot of uh, ups and downs in the program. And there, because uh, a program to be successful, there should be some interdepartmental coordination, the stakeholders, then we have the bureaucrats and the uh, governmental support and all those things to, for any program to be successful. So it uh, started in way back in 1970s, but in 1982, a formal ADR monitoring center was started with 12, uh, uh, with 12 regional centers. But in the year 1997, India became the member of WHO program for international drug monitoring managed by the Uppsala Monitoring Center, Sweden. In 2004, 
NPP, that is the National Program of Pharmacovigilance, started with six regional centers, which were set up in Mumbai, New Delhi, Kolkata, Lucknow, Pondicherry, and Chandigarh for ADR monitoring in the country. But the actual program, the initiation of program started in the year 2010 with 22 ADR monitoring centers. The ADR monitoring centers are called as AMCs, including All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi, uh, which had been set up under the pharmacovigilance program of India. Now, if you look at this particular thing, in 1982 and 80, 1989, ADR monitoring center system for India proposed 12 regional centers, right? Then India joined WHO in especially 1997. 2004 to 2008, that is a national <coughs> pharmacovigilance program has started. But in 2010 onwards, the active pharmacovigilance program of India was initiated by the then government and then it is now running very successfully and India is contributing a lot in reporting the ADRs and changing the labels or even uh, banning the drugs with respect to reporting of the adverse drug reaction uh, across the country. Now, this program PVPI does, uh, is under the control of the, the Central Drug Standard Control Organization, New Delhi, under the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare government of India, which has initiated a nationwide pharmacovigilance program in the month of July 2010. And AMS New Delhi as the national coordinating center for monitoring the adverse drug reaction in the country to safeguard the public health. But in the year 2010, uh, 22 a AMCs, including AMS New Delhi has been set up uh, under this program. And later on, this uh, AMS was shifted to uh, national coordinating center. So here, to ensure implementation of this program in a more effective way, the national coordinating center was then shifted from AIMS New Delhi to Indian Pharmacopoeia Commission, Ghazabad, on April 15, 2011, with a vision to improve the patient safety and welfare of Indian population by monitoring the safety of the medicines, thereby reducing the risk associated with their use. So here, Finally, what we have to ascertain is whatever we are giving, so whatever the medications are giving, they are not safe. So who is safe actually? The physician, the treating physician, if he has a proper knowledge and once he gives any medication and he is properly monitoring the patient for any development or development of any ADR, he thoroughly monitors with respect to uh, monitoring the cutaneous ADRs or with respect to any lab parameters like the liver function test or the renal function test, or there is any electrolyte imbalance, or there is some complete blood picture where there's some uh, uh, hemoglobin which is uh, reducing, or there is some CNS toxicity, or uh, there is involvement of CNS. And all those things are very crucial for a healthcare physician or a healthcare professional to identify any untoward event. So, not all the medicines which are available are safe, but who is safe is actually the treating physician who is closely monitoring the ADRs and treating the ADRs accordingly with very less mortality and morbidity. So this is actually the National Coordinating Center that is pharma, uh, uh, under the program, Pharmacovigilance Program of India, so who is responsible for monitoring the ADRs or adverse events in India. Now, what are the aims and objectives of this PVPI? It is to create a nationwide system for patient safety reporting. This is one object, very important objective because we have, we are actually depending upon the American data or European data. So why don't we have our own database uh, so that we have our local database or the demography because the demographics may vary with a state to state, the region to region, the country to the country. For example, if you look at Kala Azar, which is there in Bihar, or Bilahar Ziasis, or uh, there's some uh, CC that African sleeping sickness is present in Africa and so on and so forth. So. so demography and uh, 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 the diseases which are prevailing in various subsets of population or various demographic areas are keeping on changing. So why don't we have a uh, create our nationwide system uh, 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 database for the patient safety reporting. 
to identify and analyze new signal from the reported cases. So what is this signal? Signal is something, for example, I told you earlier that there is a, 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 a adverse drug reactions which are listed adverse drug reactions uh, in the label. So they are present in the label. Suppose there is some uh, adverse drug reaction, which is a fatal adverse drug reaction or which is not there in the label causing a serious concern to the patient. So if we detect such signal, two such signals after the drug is introduced into the market, which may uh, 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 send a new signal and uh, the uh, regulatory bodies, for example, it could be CDSCO or could be a, a PVPI or National Coordinating Center will take certain decision what to be done to this drug, whether it has to be stopped, whether it has to be banned, or whether there should be some new label to this drug. For example, I can give you an, uh, an example, carbamazepine, which is used for the treatment of seizures or epilepsy or convulsions. Uh, uh, re recently, not recently, two, three years back, uh, there were many reports with carbamazepine, that is Steven Johnson syndrome, that was not included in the list of ADRs previously. Now, they have included carbamazepine to cause Steven Johnson syndrome so that the treating physician will be very careful when he is using this carbamazepine in monitoring whether there is some ADR, uh, uh, which is Steven Johnson syndrome occurring in the patient or not. Not only that, to analyze the benefit risk ratio of the marketed medications, to generate evidence-based information on the safety of the medicines, to support regulatory agency in decision-making process on the use of medications, to communicate the safety information on use of medicines to various stakeholders and minimize the risk, to emerge as a national center of excellence for pharmacovigilance activities. This is the last stage to emerge as a national center for excellence for pharmacovigilance activities. Uh, if, I, if I tell you, if I'm not wrong, India is contributing only up to three to 4% of the global ADRs. So our contribution to the global ADR monitoring or ADRs, adverse drug reaction in the entire globe, it amounts to three to 4% or probably it might have increased now to 4.5% according to my knowledge. Hence, uh, to emerge as a national center for excellence for pharmacovigilance activities is a very long way to go. Then, to collaborate with other national centers for exchange of information and data management. Not only that, to provide training and consultancy support to other national pharmacovigilance centers across the globe and to promote rational use of drugs. So, this is very important. Rational use of medication. So, these are various set of objectives with respect to pharmacovigilance program of India. Now, if you look at this pharmacovigilance program of India, ADR monitoring centers, there are around 340 ADR monitoring centers, which are distributed across various sectors, healthcare sectors, for example, government. If you look at government around 106, 116 are there, non-governmental hospitals, 142. We have TB uh, centers, that is, 17, there we have ERT centers, around 20 are there, 11 are corporate hospitals, then we have army hospitals, around one center is there, army, the FMC, Pune, then we have district hospitals, around eight district hospitals are included, and then municipal hospitals, around five are included. So overall, there are 340 ADR monitoring center as of now, available in India. As you uh, re uh, recollect, around 12 centers were start, started in 210, around 12 to 24 centers. Now we are having 340 ADR monitoring centers. So you can uh, assume at what pace we are uh, going ahead with this uh, 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 ADR reporting. So who are the various stakeholders associated with the pharmacovigilance program of India? Of course, the stakeholders are the patients, the national health programs, the corporate hospitals, the marketing authorities and the ADR monitoring centers, which are the major stakeholders. Why we have to report the ADR? So, as I told you that no medicinal product is completely devoid of risk. Therefore, it is essential to have a monitoring system to ensure patient safety. And these ADRs are among the leading cause of death in many countries, which is stated by the World Health Organization in 2008. And they account for 5% of all 
hospital admissions, as you know, once the person is admitted with a serious ADR, like a liver failure or some renal failure or say Steven Johnson syndrome, it will uh, uh, consume a lot of uh, his uh, uh, finances and uh, the finances made for the patient, the finances, the governmental finances, there might be a loss to the patient himself and there might be a time loss. So all these accounts to a lot of financial, then uh, the social and all those things are lost. So the, the amount of uh, uh, patients who are as hospitalized account to 5% of total hospital admissions in India. And uh, uh, to ensure the safety of patients taking medicine, so we need to definitely report and risk optimization of the drugs by evidence-based research and data help to make safe use of medicine uh, uh, in the internet or on the websites of the IPC. Then promoting the regulatory action by omnibus database. So there's a database which is called as omnibus database, which is promoting regulatory action to be taken against the drug. And, and last but not the least, raising awareness level to report the ADRs among the common public. Then what are the benefits of reporting ADRs? So the regulatory action on the basis of ADR reports to ensure patient safety, upgrading the package insert, then marketing authorization recall, that is nothing but to withdraw the drug or to ban the drug. Then the batch recall based on clustering of the ADR, then changes in classification example from over the counter to prescription only medicines. For example, there are so many drugs which are sold over the counter. So whether to uh, switch on the over-the-counter drug to the prescription-only medications or special prescription uh, 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 changes have to be made or restricted, restricted prescription changes have to be made. In, so that is the benefits of ADR reporting. And when you look into the ADR reporting procedure, who can report, what to be reported, how to report, whom to report, and where to report, these are various questions raised by people. So who, what, how, whom and where to report are the concerns of this particular thing. So who can report? So as I told you, healthcare professionals can report ADRs. The consumer can report to the all healthcare professionals. The consumers can directly report to the National Coordinating Center or PVPI Center in Ghaziapath. The pharmaceutical companies can report to NCC. And then AMCs, that is Adverse Drug Reaction Monitoring Centers can report to the AMCs. But when you talk about the pharmaceutical companies or the CROs, that is clinical research organizations, they are going to report to the uh, Central Drug Standard Control Organization and they have to report on a periodical basis. They are called as PSURs, that is Periodic Safety Update Reports, where the pharmaceutical companies or the CO, CROs are the, the companies which are undertaking the clinical trials, they have to report to the CDSCO on a periodical basis could be either three months or six months periodical basis reporting of the adverse drug reactions have to be done. So what to report? So all types of suspected ADRs, known or unknown, serious or, non, or non-serious, frequent or rare have to be reported. And reactions from all types of pharmaceutical products like medicines, vaccine related ADRs, which is dealt with in adverse event following immunization, then medical devices, this is the uh, ADRs related uh, to medical devices is categorized under uh, a heading which is called as material vigilance, which undertakes that is the implants uh, or the stentings or the stents and all those things, they come under medical devices. It is called as material vigilance. Uh, any ADRs related to the herbal drugs or nutraceuticals uh, 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 have to be reported. And the medication errors, this is very important. The medication errors have to be reported. For example, whether there's an accidental exposure or inappropriate use of medic medicinal products or a product dispensing, selection, prescribing, storage error and issues uh, have to be reported. So what to report? So any off-label use, for example, use of med medicines for unapproved medication age group, dosage or route of administration has to be reported. Any misuse of the drug or overdose or abuse of the drug has to be reported. Lack of efficacy and other product quality related issues. So if there is no drug effect or lack of drug effect, 
has to be reported whether the drug is ineffective in approved indication or there is a delayed or incomplete drug effect or the drug effect is faster or less than expected also has to be reported so all these things can be reported to the adr monitoring center or directly to the national coordinating center then we do have this how to report because the government uh, 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 that is under the program of pharmacovigilance program of india we are having the various pro pharma so this is a pro pharma or which is for the suspected adverse drug reaction reporting center i am not going to read this pro pharma this is for the medical professional and this is for the layman so this pro pharma, pro pharma the blue pro pharma is for the consumer and this uh, uh, red pro pharma it is mainly for the healthcare professionals then what are the various reporting tools available what are the various reporting tools available so here we are having an app so this mobile app can be downloaded from the google play store there is an android app or as well it can be downloaded from uh, uh, the for the apple phone also you can download this is a pvpi mobile app through which you can directly upload the icsr so what is this icsr that is individual case safety reports so the adr which we are uploading uh, it is called as an individual case safety report or else the common man or any person can call this toll free number that is 1800 1803024 and this adr data has to be entered through a software which is uh, uh, given or which is provided by the pharmacovigilance program of india which is called as vigiflo this is the database or the software through which we are going to upload the adverse drug reactions to the national coordinating center and whom to report so whom to report especially we can report to the adverse drug monitoring centers we can report to the pvpi helpline as i told you that this is a toll free number 18001803024 there's a mobile app then we have an uh, 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 email id also is there you can mail to the indian pharmacopeia commission that is the who Co collaborating center or it could be the ncc the national coordinating center then how are these icsrs as i told you what we report to the higher center is called as an individual case safety report under the pharmacovigilance program of india so here once the healthcare professional or the patients they fill the suspected adr form or the consumer form which i have shown that is the uh, what is this form uh, that is the red and the blue form red is for the uh, professional blue is for the consumers once we uh, upload this or uh, enter this form and we are going to send to the adverse drug reaction monitoring center and in this at adr monitoring center the causality assessment is done whether it is a possible possible uh, certain possible probable or uncertain unaccessible accessible and so on and so forth and this data is entered through the uh, software which is called as vigiflow and it is forwarded to the national coordinating center where the report is analyzed and if the report is incomplete again it is resent back to the adverse drug reaction monitoring center later on this analyzed data it is sent to the regulatory intervention the, the regulatory bodies are there and then later on after sending the uh, analyzed report it is sent to the upsala monitoring center sweden for example i will tell you there is one drug which is called as liraglutide it is called as the glp1 analog so this liraglutide which has, uh, is manufactured for the use of uh, uh, it in the type 2 diabetes or in diabetes we are using liraglutide but initially when it has come into the market it has resulted in development of coronary spasm so this coronary spasm was uh, uh, reported in india around two or three cases were there in india and across the globe it were around 14 such cases if there were n number of cases reported coronary spasm this particular drug would have been banned so that is what uh, is the uh, role of reporting an adr to through healthcare professional to the adr monitoring centers national coordinating center as many countries they are going to send such kind of adrs to the who upsala monitoring center where again some certain action can be taken either globally or per se india by itself can Uh, 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 take an action with respect to the demography. Okay. Now, 
what are the pvpi communication channels as i told you there are so many communication channels for example we are having a marketing authorization holders that is the national coordinating center ipc gaziabad in turn it is collaborating through cdsu the headquarters is in new delhi it will collaborate to the upsala monitoring center then we are under this national coordination program there is a steering committee there is a working group there is signal detection review review panel there is a core training panel the quality review panel and all these things and all these uh, communication channels are acting in collaboration with one another and finally when you look come down here there is a healthcare professional and patients uh, reporting to adr monitoring center there are so many zonal centers available then there are training centers available so this is an, an entire network from the grassroots level to the adr monitoring center to the regional centers to the working group committee steering committee the signal review panel the core training training panel quality review panel and then cdsu marketing authorization holders and then the national coordinating center to the upsala monitor these are all the communication channels between the pharmacovigilance program and other working bodies now this is the month wise distribution of individual case safety reports from april 19 to march 20 this is the data actually april 19 with so many cases are there so you can see this bar diagram so these are the number of cases reported across in our, our country and in march 20 of course we are having 4666 cases then the status of adr reporting so the trend of adr reporting through pvpi since 2011 till date is mentioned below and you can see here the number of cases in 2011 were 14800 uh uh uh, uh 14000 odd cases and in year 2017 it was 71000 cases across india and in 6 months if you see it is around 40000 cases that means another 6 months are left over so another 40 that means to say there is an upward trend in the reporting of the uh, adrs across the country right from the time of inception uh, functioning regu uh, regularly since 2011 now the age wise distribution of Uh, individual case safety reports if you see 0 to 21 uh, days we have a point to the majority of adrs are seen between the ages of 18 to 44 in india 45 to 64 years around 31% and this is 40% and then it keeps on uh, increase and as the age advances due to polypharmacy and so on and so forth again the number of cases are more in the elderly people around 10% of the chunk of the old population are associated with a uh, development of adverse drug reactions which has to be addressed in due course of time and apart from that what are the pharmacovigilance program of india partners so pvpi there is an integration with the public health programs for example pvpi is having a collaboration with the national tuberculosis El elimination program pvpi is also uh, having collaboration with universal program of india and adverse drug event or adverse event following immunization or aefi adverse events following immunization then there is a national vector borne disease control program where pvpi is coordinated national aids control program that is the naco pvpi is co co collaborate that means to say the pvpi partners it's like uh, collaborating with various uh, uh, national health programs wherein you can uh, get so many adrs and of late if you uh, know that this uh, pharmacovigilance program of india it has come out with certain uh, taken up certain centers where there is active surveillance generally we do passive surveillance but active surveillance with respect to bedaquilin so this bedaquilin it is a, a molecule uh, of uh, our country uh, which is used for the treatment of uh, resistant tuberculosis or mdr resistant tuberculosis that's bedaquilin there are few centers which is identified and one of the centers which is identified is varangal that is uh, uh, that the tuberculosis center in varangal okay the chest diseases hospital in varangal is one of the center for active surveillance of bedaquilin wherein the patients are given bedaquilin and uh, they are assessing for any adverse drug reaction till now uh, not uh, major adverse drug reactions are been reported but some Uh, they say that some uh, QT prolongation or something is there, but I exactly don't know what uh, it is. But active surveillance is one program taken up by a pharmacovigilance uh, program of India in collaboration with various district uh, uh, or 
certain hospitals uh, uh, with, with the chest disease hospitals. Okay, now what are the PVPI recommendations to the cent uh, Central uh, Drug Standard Control Organization? So it can recommend any drug alert. It can recommend any updating package insert alert, or it can give signals. For example, till now, uh, PharmPVPI PVPI has given 71 drug alerts. It has updated package inserts around 24 inserts, and it has detected five signals. So this is a very uh, big achievement after the taking up of the uh, program uh, to very serious uh, a note. So they have given so many, a uh, lot of contribution, and this has been done only through reporting of ADRs across the country. So 71 drug alerts, 24 updating package inserts, and detection of five such signals. Very important. Now, the signal generated by a uh, uh, national uh, coordinating center. So Ucelterman, it is an Ucelterman, it is an antiviral drug which has induced sinus bradycardia, which is a signal under consideration in the CDSCO right now. So Ucelterman, it is used in flu, especially the Ucelterman. It has, it is inducing sinus bradycardia, which is a signal which is under consideration in CDSCO. Then there are recommendations to the CDS or PIL changes. Okay, so what is this? This benedipin. Benedipin is a calcium channel blocker causing photosensitivity reaction to include this particular reaction in the, the patient information leaflet. PIL is patient information leaflet. This is under consideration. Piperacillin in plus tezobactam. So this is a penicillin with a, a, a beta lactamase inhibitor causing acute granulomatous ex, uh, exanthematous papillo, uh, pustulosis. That is acute granulomatous exanthematous, uh, uh, acute generalized exanthematous pustulosis. Okay. To include in the uh, uh, public information leaflet. It is under like that tinidazole causing skin pigmentation chloroquine causing Steven Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis because you might have known that a lot of uh, use of this hydroxychloroquine in this COVID uh, pandemic was there and it has resulted in development of Steven Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal ne necrolysis to be included in the CDSCO. The order has been issued by the CDSCO to include Steven Johnson and toxic epidermal. And then we have proton pump inhibitors causing acute kin kidney injury the order has been issued by the CDO. Like that, we are having so many uh, 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 drug alerts also. For example, in to March 2020, olanzapine, that is an antipsychotic drug, uh, atypical antipsychotic, which was used for schizophrenia. So schizophrenia, it is causing hyponatremia. This is a drug alert. Again, piperacillin tazobactam causing blurred vision, disulfiram causing skin hyperpigmentation, Fluconazole, it is again an antifungal drug causing mouth ulceration. It is a drug alert. Like that, we are having so many drug alerts with cephalosporins like AGEP, cetrazine causing hiccups, atorvastatin causing vitamin D deficiency, which is a statin, because that is a cholesterol lowering drug or hypolipidemic drug. Cetrazine is an antihistaminic. Metronidazole, it is a imidazole group of derivative used uh, in the treatment of, uh, say, uh, dysentery, diarrhea, and then uh, for anaerobic infections causing vasculitis is again a drug alert. Like that, there are so many drug alerts like respiridone causing rabbit syndrome, febuxostat causing uh, toxic epidermal necrolysis, ticoplanin, again, it is uh, antibiotic causing toxic epidermal necrolysis. All these are drug alerts. And uh, this pharmacovigilance program of India is uh, dealing with different uh, vigilance programs. They are pharmacovigilance program of India, adverse event following immunization like AEFI, hemovigilance program of India, which is actually dealing with the blood and blood related products. Okay, this is called as hemovigilance. And not only that, we have another program called as material vigilance, as I told you earlier that any devices, any ADS related to devices, which is called as material vigilance, any ADS related with blood and blood related products is called as hemovigilance. Any ADS related with immunization is called as AEFI. And of course, for PVPI is nothing but any, any, anything which can be reported in the pharmacovigilance program of India. Then we have uh, 
serious aefi case notification form this is the this is an uh, adverse drug reaction monitoring after immunization this is the form adverse event following immunization reporting form of course i want don't want to discuss this in detail because we have a practical setup for you uh, in the pharmacovigilance wherein we will be discussing in detail regarding this reporting forms with reporting adr so this is an adr uh, reporting form uh, due to transfusion reaction then we have another form which is called as medical device adverse event uh, reporting form due for material vigilance then what are the prescribers so when you when we go to what is the responsibility of the prescribers so these prescribers may be anyone could be the healthcare professional they could be the nurse whatever capacity they are what are the prescribers responsibilities in pharmacovigilance so here this is very important so the prescribers maybe the healthcare professionals should take complete history with respect to any previous drug allergies or any family history of drug allergies of the patient before prescribing the medication this is very important select an appropriate drug based on existing comorbidities and the healthcare professionals uh, should take complete history of already using drugs for existing medical conditions resulting in any kind of allergies or hypersensitivity reactions and the healthcare professional should explain about the possible adverse drug reactions to the prescribed drugs so i can give you one example for example if i want to prescribe a drug uh pregabalin so this pregabalin it is a drug which is used nowadays in treating uh diabetic neuropathy so this pregabalin is a drug which is going to be used in the treatment of diabetic neuropathy pregabalin is also used as an anti convulsant but it is uh, majority of uh, topiramate and pregabalin are used in the treatment of what is called as diabetic neuropathy so when i i am prescribing this drug to my patient i will definitely tell what are the probable adrs which are listed in the patient information leaflet the common ones are the cns ones which may cause either a drowsiness or it may cause ataxia or it may cause instability in the guide these these are the known adrs and uh, these i will tell to the, my patient and if my patient gets these symptoms he will definitely come back to me and he will tell me sir whatever the uh, symptoms you have told with respect to these drugs i am having these problems so what i will tell i will tell my patient to stop that drug okay these are the cns side effects of pregabalin okay but apart from that also the patient may experience any serious adr which is not there in the pil that is patient information leaflet or the uh, uh, public or patient information leaflet uh, it has to be monitored and uh, reported to the healthcare professional and also i will advise the patient or the healthcare professional to advise the patient to stop the drug immediately if he or she experiences any adr and inform the doctor to prevent further damage then the patient should be advised to inform the doctor immediately if he experiences any untoward effect which was not explained by the healthcare professionals so these are the prescribers responsibilities in the successful a, 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 a continuation of the pharmacovigilance program of india to look at uh, whether we are our country is excelling in uh, reporting the adrs and how to prevent these adverse drug reactions in patients so we can prevent these adverse drug reactions by avoiding polypharmacy if you look at the prescription patterns especially in the elderly patients who are having osteoarthritis who may have cardiac disease who may have asthma the patient may also have some other related disease comorbidities like hypertension and diabetes so if you look at the prescription of elderly people there are around seven or eight drugs which is called as more than three drugs or is called as a polypharmacy okay more than three or four drugs is called as polypharmacy and to avoid the polypharmacy use the drug that you know well and uh, do not change the therapy or treatment from known drugs to unfamiliar ones without good reason this is very important it's become a faction nowadays like a new molecule comes and we try to change the drug from the older molecule without knowing because 
without knowing uh, really does it have any good benefit over the other drug or does it have uh, really a serious adverse effect which is there with the previous drug and this drug is not having like that. So one should not keep on changing the treatment from known drugs to unfamiliar ones or the newer drugs which are there in the market and use textbooks and other reference material for providing information on adverse drug reactions and interactions and variety of interactions and adverse drug reactions like anticoagulants, hypoglycemic drugs, and a uh, drug affecting the central nervous system with careful monitoring of the patients with such reactions. And one should always be aware of the drug interactions or interaction with drug to drugs and drug food interactions, drug alcohol interactions, and even with household chemical and drug interactions are also to be monitored for the better outcome and to prevent the adverse drug reactions. And once the adverse drug reaction occurs to treat that particular adverse drug reaction. Then, review all the drugs used by your patients regularly, taking special notice with those bought without prescription, that is the over-the-counter or halber pre pre preparation. Because when you know, when you look at now, there are so many drugs which are advertised, they are available online. So people have the tendency to get lured with these online advertisements or over-the-counter drugs or herbal preparations. And now the immunity booster, the, the people are... Tom, Dick and Harry, they are advertising like immunity boosters and all those things. We get lewd and may result in development of serious ADRs. Then be particularly careful when prescribing drugs to the children, elderly, the pregnant and nursing women, the seriously ill patients with hepatic and renal diseases. And also be careful uh, 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 on ongoing monitoring is also essential in these patients, which is very much essential. If your patients show signs or symptoms not clearly explained by the course of their illness, think of an adverse drug reaction. If you suspect an adverse drug reaction, consider stopping the drug or reduce the dosage as soon as possible. And uh, please notify the adverse drug reaction to the near nearby adverse drug reaction monitoring center. Then what are the suspected adverse drug reactions reporting form? So this is suspected ADR reporting form which is the red form. So of course, this red form also has uh, various fields. We have four fields actually. So I don't want to describe, describe this in detail because this will be dealt with in your practicals. So this red form, it is consisting of four uh, subdomains. It is called as patient information. Then we have suspect a column for suspected ADR reaction. Then we have suspected medications to be written here. Then the reporter details to be written here. Like that, there are certain four uh, uh, columns here. Okay, so patient information, suspected adverse drug reaction, suspected medications, and reporter details. This is very important. Then apart from that, medicine side effect reporting form for consumer. So this uh, consumer form I already told you it is available as blue form that I will deal in detail in uh, your practicals. But, <clears throat> so this uh, form is launched, it's first ADR reporting form for consumers in August 2014. And it is available in various languages like in English, Hindi, and uh, nine other regional languages like Telugu, Gujarati, Kannada, Bengali, Malayalam, Odia, Tamil and Marathi, and Assamese. So these are the various languages in which this consumer uh, uh, medicine side effect reporting form has been designed. And not only that, this is the consumer form, reporting form, which is there in the Telugu language. Okay. Then this is the site from where we can report, that is VigiFlow, but everybody is not uh, accessible because we have a protected password for this. Only adverse drug reaction monitoring centers can use this form site. For reporting. So these are various uh, 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 details here. Initial reporter information, we have the patient information. Then the case narrative and other information is uh, have to be written here. The medical and past drug history has to be filled in here. This is through VigiFlow, I'm telling. That is your adverse drug reaction monitoring centers can do this. And the detail of the info, information about the reaction then we have the drug related information, the role of the drug and all those things can have to be included in this form. Then the tests and procedures 
which were undertaken during the reaction have to be written, written here in detail. And assessment, so this is actually the assessment from, from the Kaktiya Medical College Varangal. This is a WHO UNC causality assessment. So there are various uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, subsets of information to be entered here. And um, this adverse drug reaction reporting, which is there, I have already told in detail, but again, in a nutshell, if you look at uh, how Indian population is getting benefited in a nutshell. So here, if you look at, <clears throat> if you look at, the reporting tools. So we can report through the phone, through an app. Then the pharmaceutical companies can also report. And uh, uh, the common man can report, the safety alert can be reported, ADR reporting centers can, be re can report. And uh, so after processing, if the report is invalid, again, the case, case are reported back to the ADR monitoring center. And finally, the healthcare professionals, the patients or others may report ADRs either directly to the national coordinating center or to the adverse drug reaction monitoring centers via the mobile app or the toll free number. And finally, the case, uh, the, the action will be taken if the, there is a valid report and it needs uh, as a signal alert or to withdraw or to uh, uh, give uh, uh, or replace with an, another ADR like a Steven Johnson syndrome in the PIL, and the regulatory actions can be taken up in this particular ADR uh, reaction reporting, which is occurring in India. So this is very much useful. Now, I would like to end my talk with uh, this particular slide, where we are uh, have started this pharmacovigilance program of India. We have an ADR uh, monitoring center, which is established in MGM which is attached to the Kakthiya Medical College. And we have a, a, a pharmacovigilance associated who is appointed by uh, uh, the center that is the um, NCC or PVPI uh, India, the National Coordinating Center, which is there in Ghaziabad. This pharmacovigilance associated, and I am the coordinator of this uh, ADR monitoring center that is um, uh, MGM and KMC. So this, established, this center is established in the year 2013. From uh, 213 onwards, we are very much uh, successful in reporting various ADRs. And of course, we have published certain pay, uh, papers or uh, drug alerts, as well as the case reports in certain reputed journals. The, one of the case report, which is published in Indian Journal of Pharmacology in 2017 was atorycoxib induced toxic epidermal necrolysis. And then we have so many uh, drug related ADRs which were published in various journals. So this pharmacovigilance program and the ADR monitoring center is a very good uh, 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 platform for uh, strengthening the database uh, with respect to the patient safety. So this particular uh, pharmacovigilance uh, center in KM, located in center, uh, located in KMC MGM Hospital Varangal, uh, we can report known or unknown serious or non-serious adverse drug reactions to the ADRM monitoring center, which is located in the room number 110, 110 in the OP block of MGM, old OP block of MGM, which is beside ERT center, that is antiretroviral therapy center, OP building, MGM hospital. I am the coordinator of this ADR, react, ADR monitoring center and Srinivas Velupula he is the pharmacovigilance associate. I thank you all for your patient hearing. Thank you very much.